So Genghis, first of all about your instrument, which I assume is a very ancient instrument. Yes, this is a very ancient instrument. It's around 3000 years old, and, but it was not always in this form. So it is made out of reed, not bamboo. And um, so in the Mediterranean uh, areas in the world, there are a lot of reeds. So in Spain, in, um, in uh, for example, Turkey, in Adana, in uh, Iskenderun, they call also. And the best reed, it is actually uh, grown in Iskenderun, in Hatay, uh, because there is a river that's flowing not downwards, but upwards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the reeds become very strong then. And so it's the reed flute, and it's, it's a symbol for actually uh, uh, Tasawuf tradition in Turkey, which, the, which Mevlana Celal al Rumi is uh, yeah, the, the, the head of the philosophy uh, of, of the music. So this is the Ney. So it is very closely related to Sufism. Yeah, 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 you could say that. It is, it is, it is actually, it is the, it is the main instrument for Sufi tradition. Uh -huh. Because Mevlana starts, uh, Rumi starts his uh, book, Mesnevi, with the, the melancholy of the Ney. So in, in this uh, 18 verses, he describes the uh, melancholy of longing to your roots. And uh, so the Ney is plucked out of its roots and it's longing to go back again. And that's why uh, it's sounding so melancholic. On the Balkans, they have an instrument called Kaval, which yeah. you also play. Yeah, yeah. Is it related? Uh, well, um, it's a different family of, of, of end blown flutes. Uh -huh. For example, on the Ney, you have six uh, holes on the, on, the, on, on the front and one at the back. On the Kaval, you have seven. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and the ney is not totally a tube. On, on these uh, parts of the ney, you have uh, you have some reed left over, which uh, these uh, parts become so a sound uh, room, and this is all uh, uh, clean. Uh -huh. With kaval, you you have the whole thing as a as a, as a as a tube. So what what that means is. When you play uh, flageolets on the kaval, uh -huh. you hear uh, an octave uh, above it because but, of the standing weight. But the technique of the of the blowing is it's also similar. Different. No, it's also different. Ah. Yeah, because because the ney has a mouthpiece. This is called the vashpare, and the kaval doesn't have this. Uh -huh. uh, this makes it also sound a bit brighter than the kaval. Brighter. Yeah, okay. and also the technique. For example, we do. Uh, uh, vibrato with our cheeks and on the kaval you do it with your head so it's a different kind of play <laughs> so you have a quite unusual CV <laughs> okay. I checked it on your website you are involved with micro tonality mm -hmm. you studied makam you did stage and event techniques you uh -huh. did sound techniques sound design yeah and then you studied modal music yeah and cultural anthropology yeah, I studied one year cultural anthropology because I was sick of uh, conservatory. So I took a break and I went to study cultural anthropology. But that was good for me because then I started really playing uh, this, these kind of instruments. Um, uh, but de therefore I was studying uh, sound design uh, at uh, the HKU. And uh, so I'm into um, electronic music also and uh, the microtonal compositions came because of the tonal system of Turkish music, because that's all about microtone. So I was looking for implementing this system in a way that is not only traditional. But you, and you combine it with electronics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I understand it, you, you, the electronics are sometimes based on natural sounds. Yeah, yeah. For example, now, I was using for the for the tenor composition of uh, Tsubaki. I was using. Uh, I was thinking about how could I have a sound that is um, overall uh, embodying this uh, this piece, and uh, I used I think a slide guitar uh, sample, which is very uh, stretched and is coming sometimes and going away to imitate, for example, the air that is stretching that's becoming thin 
and passing by and coming again. Because this piece is part of a, let's say, a sort of relay in music, uh, which is organized by the Festival for Compassion. Yeah, yeah. And you're one of the people, one of the musicians, who plays this piece, uh, which is written by Calliope Tsupaki, yeah. on your instrument. Yeah. How does it feel to be part of this sort of relay of musicians? Yeah, it's, it feels like a kind of a branch of a tree. So I'm now a branch <laughs> of this piece and uh, the piece is centered. Um, yeah, it's pretty uh, unique, I think, also, because it's written for Western uh, uh, instruments, actually. So it was, for me, a bit uh, challenging, uh, but I, it's, it's an honor, actually. <laughs> Just to be curious, is there any connection between your work and that of uh, minimalists like Lamont Young? No, no, no. Because he's also interested in microtonality and in interference between yeah. notes that are very close together. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One last question. Yes. Um, you play an improvisation which is on your website, which is based on the snoring of your niece. Yes. I couldn't hear her snoring there. No? No. Then you need to listen again. <laughs> because um, I, my niece was, I think, then for, uh, born for two months. And she was really snoring, so I sampled it, uh, her snoring sound. But snoring is a very rhythmic sound, actually. And it, it is very, there's a big attack. So if you, I, I, I put it, I think, um, a sound, uh, uh, sound resonator on it, on the snoring. Uh -huh. so when it starts, it's resonating in a, in a tone. Ah. So that makes a rhythm actually, and these tones are scaled in a certain makam. We call uh, this kind of skill uh, of, or a mode in, in, in Western music. And so when, when she's uh, snoring, then I get this uh, drone field of this makam. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well.